You want to stay safe? Watch two episodes of Art 101 with Mr. Burger and call me in the morning. Art, 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 Art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Burke. I am a master of Greco-Roman wrestling. Well, as you know, I'm a professional artist and educator who's attempting to provide you with the best in art historical content. If you like this video, interact with this thing. Much appreciation to those that have, do, and will interact. What? Anytime. Photography has always been one of those artistic passions of mine, and a group of photographers that I think we should explore, and I think you agree because you clicked on the video, is a group called Group F64, a group of photographers that came together as a collective to really reshape and, and um, help promote photography of a certain breed. Now what do I know? I color for a living. but. I can tell you, I think you're gonna learn something from this, and my fellow photographers, uh, you might pick up a few things too. So, without further, here we go. November the 15th, 1932, at an art museum in San Francisco, California, 11 photographers announced themselves as Group F64. They included Ansel Adams, Imogen Cunningham, John Paul Edwards, Preston Holder, Consuelo Kanaga, Alma Levinson, Sonia Noskoyek, Harry Swift, Willard Van Dyke, Brett Weston, and Edward Weston. Yeah, they're famous, but they're just a little bit dead. While there were 11 in the exhibition, all of these photographers did not exactly see themselves as members of the Group F64. There were some people that had a loose association and there were some that were like the founding members and some people that were in that membership number of 11 that did not identify as members themselves. So the number's a little bit wishy-washy. Oh wow, you gotta be shitting me. <laughs> The idea for the group was formed at a gallery party for Edward Weston in San Francisco, where a group of seven or eight had discussed forming this group devoted to the exhibition and promotion of a photography that broke with pictorialism. Now, here's the question. What is pictorialism? This is a group championed by Alfred Stieglitz in New York. Side note, if you think the first East Coast, West Coast beef involved 1990s rap music, you're sadly mistaken. Stieglitz and his group in New York were working out of Gallery 291, and the counter to that was Group F64's 983 Gallery in San Francisco. And here's what photographer Willard Van Dyke remembers about that. We were a little surprised at the reaction on the part of pictorialists and people like Mortensen and so forth to what we were doing. And at first, I didn't think we had any sense of... Uh, um, of trying to uh, gospelize the thing, did we? <laughs> I think we had a sense of mission. I know I did. Oh, you did. <laughs> so, I can see it. Yeah. I can admit it. Yeah. The pictorial philosophy had uh, bothered me from the very beginning, and I can. You know, you're going to look awfully silly with that knife sticking up your ass. Pictorialism was an approach that focused on beauty of subjects and tone, composition, rather than a documentation of reality. It was more of a vehicle of self-expression than truth-telling and trying to capture straightforward exactly what was in front of the camera. <laughs> that was awesome. So what's in the name? Group F64, well, it refers to the smallest aperture available in their large format cameras that most of them used at this time. Street photography had great expressive potential. And wonderful things were starting about 1930, 31. Uh, F64 seems to be synonymous with great sharpness and depth of field, even with a large camera. 
using 8x10, you can use F64, and you really have a, uh, especially in a compact print, you have an amazing depth of field. And the illusion, the, the simulation of, of, uh, of uh, sharpness and brilliance, and it just seemed to be a very agreeable term, I think. They and it was also a bit of a reference to the belief that photographers should celebrate the world as it was as opposed to disguising the world by using the media's ability to present the world as it is. Now this loose association of California photographers had focused their work on landscape photography as well as enlargements of the natural world including plants, natural products such as wood and leaves, an order of nature's chaos, as well as presentations of the human form and some industrial sorts of photography. Now this seems to be kind of all over the place, a little bit disjointed in subject, but Group F64 photographers focused on replicating what was exactly in front of them, and this focus on replicating the truth is really what bonded them together as a group. This work was unmanipulated, pure documentation. Side note, because they were coming together as a group, they decided to put their beliefs out there in the public in the form of a manifesto. In their unifying manifesto, they would write, Pure photography is defined as possessing no qualities of technique, composition, or idea derivative of any other art form. And the group will show no work at any time that does not conform to its standards. Fortunately, you know better than that. Over the next few years, the Great Depression, well, it got a little bit greater, and several members of this group started to migrate towards New York, which led to the group being dissolved by the end of 1935. Many of these photographers continued to work with the media and are considered some of the best photographers of their time and some of the best of the 20th century. Group F64's most complete set or collection of their works is housed at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. And although around for just a handful of years, Group F64 would have a very profound influence on up-and-coming photographers such as Dorothea Lang and Walker Evans, who would document throughout the Great Depression and beyond. I tell you, friends, I really love bringing you that content. Thanks for letting me share it with you. You have a good day out there, and we'll see you on the next one.